everyone and welcome back to Yes Let's. Today is the first day of our Explore Week and I am so excited! For a whole week we are going to be learning about A Midsummer Night's Dream by William Shakespeare. We had a poll on our Facebook group asking you guys which characters you wanted to hear about first and you picked the Mechanicals! So, before we start, I'll just give you some really quick information about A Midsummer Night's Dream. It was written by William Shakespeare in 1595, and it's one of his comedies. This is such an interesting play. It's got comedy, love, fairies, magic, spells, and even a donkey head. So, let's kick off the week by exploring the quirky, much-loved Mechanicals. So, who are the Mechanicals? Well, they're a ragtag bunch of amateur performers, putting on a play and hoping that their play is going to be so good and so exciting that they are going to be picked as part of the entertainment for a very special wedding. In fact, it's the wedding celebration of the Duke of Athens, Theseus, and his new wife, Hippolyta. Towards the end of the play, the Mechanicals actually do get chosen to perform their play to the Duke and the Duchess of Athens, and this is what we call the play within a play. Why are they called Mechanicals, you might ask? Well, a Mechanical is a word that Shakespeare used to describe someone who works with their hands, sometimes referred to as a labourer. Their jobs are usually to make things, mend things, build things, fix things, that sort of thing. So, I introduce you to the Mechanicals. This is Peter Quince. Peter Quince is a carpenter, which means he makes things using wood. Peter Quince is the director of the play and the most sensible of the bunch. He tries his very, very best to get his actors organised, but it doesn't quite work out the way he wanted it to. He is also the narrator of the play, which means he just tells the story as it goes along. He's sort of like the glue that tries to hold the play together as best he can. Next we have Snug the Joiner. Snug is actually the only member of the Mechanicals who didn't get given a first name. Poor old Snug. Snug is the shy, quiet member of the group. He's a joiner by trade, which basically means, well, joining things. So his job is a little bit similar to a carpenter because he works with wood, but he would make more delicate things like furniture and the interiors of things like houses and boats. Snug plays the lion in the play. He tries his very, very best to be a fearsome lion, but he gets worried that he's going to scare the people who are watching the show. So he often comes across as more of a friendly kitten. Next up is Nick Bottom. And what can we say about Nick Bottom? Well, first of all, his name sounds pretty silly, doesn't it? Nick Bottom is a weaver, which means he would make things like rugs and blankets and other textiles. Bottom is very extravagant and dramatic. He is often referred to as the comic relief of the play, which just means the things he says and does make us laugh out loud. I think there are lots of comic actors in the play. Lots of things happen that make us laugh, but often Bottom gets the best lines and the biggest laughs. Bottom is also a little bit of a diva. Me, 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 me. He kind of wants the play to be all about him. How dare you! Sorry. <laughs> in the play within a play, he plays Pyramus, who is the hero. He takes himself very, very seriously in this role, but he ends up making everyone laugh. Bottom also finds himself involved in the fairy world when the mischievous Puck puts a spell on him. Don't worry, you'll learn all about Puck and the other fairies in another video. Now onto Francis Flute, the bellows mender. A bellows mender is just what it sounds like somebody who mends bellows. Bellows are an old tool that used to be used to make the heat of a fire grow. A bellow used to let a puff of air out which would cause the flames to rise. Now, back to Francis Flute. 
Flute is somehow convinced to play Thisbe in the play within a play. And Thisbe is a woman. Flute doesn't want to play the woman and he tries really, really hard to say no. Oh, let me not play a woman. I have a beard. Come in. But Flute is somehow convinced to play the fair maiden in what is supposed to be the tragedy of Pyramus and Thisbe. Did you know that in Shakespeare's time, all of the characters were played by men? Society didn't think it was proper for a woman to be on stage. So, every character was played by a man, even the romantic heroines, like Juliet. You can tell that Shakespeare was very self-aware when he was writing about flute, and he could see the comedy in it himself. Nowadays, of course, women play parts in all sorts of Shakespeare plays, and there are even some productions where the women play the men's roles. Now moving on to Tom Snout, the tinker. A tinker is somebody who uses metal to make things, like jewellery and tools. They're sometimes also referred to as a metalsmith. Originally, Snout is supposed to be playing Pyramus's father, However, as the rehearsals go on, they realise they need a wall to separate Pyramus and Thisbe. And so enters Tom Snout. Tom Snout dresses up as a wall. He puts loam and rough cast on himself and he acts as the wall that divides the two lovers. And you can see now why people see the play within a play as less of a tragedy and more of a comedy. And, of course, last but not least is Robin Starveling the tailor. A tailor is somebody who makes clothes. Out of all of the different professions that the mechanicals have, a tailor is probably the one you've heard of before. This is where things get really, really funny. The troupe of actors realise that they need moonshine to come in through a window. And instead of using lighting or something like that, they decide that Robin Starveling will become moonshine. So Robin Starveling sort of becomes the moon. During the performance of the Duke and the Duchess, Robin Starveling comes on as the moon, holding a lantern and a thorn bush and a dog. The audience are a little bit confused about what Robin Starveling is supposed to be. They ask questions like, is he the moon or the man in the moon? Is the lantern the moon or is the man the moon? And what's the dog for? I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious that this is the moon and this is my dog. Oh, so now you know all about the mechanicals from A Midsummer Night's Dream. We can't wait to explore the rest of this fantastic play with all of you, so stay tuned for future videos. As always, you can subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss a thing. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter. We hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now!